Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Just had a question from the Dan and Jambalaya. I want you to know is this, uh, let me just see, the exact question was. Uh, here we go. Uh, good day, Mr. Chapman. Well, Basil's fine, but I, I, I'll handle that. You must be European because it took me decades to actually get used to the fact that little kids were calling me Basil instead of Mr. Chapman. But that's America, and that was very yeah, – eventually I got used to it, but it took a little while. Um, so it's got nothing to do with respect. It's just uh, the way things are. Uh, but in, the, in this particular instance, is that the dreaded H pattern you speak of in the monthly TLT? So let's go to that immediately because it is quite important at this particular stage to see where the yields are going. So the low that was made of 91.85 the week of October the 28th, 2022 in the TLT, which is the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF actually – they call it the 20-year bond, but it has uh, longer durations as well. So 92.23 was the low three weeks ago. So it held there. That. That's the H pattern that I call the dreaded H. Oh, I should do this since I'll be talking apples to apples. Here we go. So patterns I look at, three core patterns just in terms of uh, directional move. Straight up, straight down. That's what I always look at. There's your straight down. Then you can get an arch formation or a cup formation or a mix of one and two and one and three. So in this particular instance, it's red because if it goes to peak A and then a B and then fails, takes out the left side low uh, in fairly quick duration, uh, there's a good chance that it's going to go quite a bit lower. So you can see there was a dreaded H right there, peak B minus failure. There was another one there, peak B minus failure. And then we went to peak A, B, C. Going to a C says you've used up a lot of the negative energy, but you've also used up quite a bit of the, uh, the positive energy. Therefore, there's a chance that you will stall and not just smash down below the left side low, in this case, 92.23. And that's, this is what we're going to see. So let me just draw this in for patterns, repeated patterns. There's the H pattern yet again, right from that low there. And it's arching over right there. And you can see the MACD is still good, turning down. In this particular instance, the MACD was good for a little bit, not that wide. And then it crossed negative. The stochastic didn't even make it over 80%. This one did. Now it's at 75%. So it's slightly different on a purely technical level. In the large H to M pattern, in other words, sometimes what you see is this, whoops, this particular H holds the left side low, or it just nicks it, but then it comes back quickly, and then it makes another H. It looks like a lowercase H goes to a lowercase M. You can even have that repeated a few times. Meantime, back at the range, what we're all looking at here is that you've got an H, which goes to like an M, and then another arch formation fails. In a larger context, it's just a very big arch formation, H formation. And here it is still coming down because the MACD is still the MACD is still very weak. Look, here's the histogram, very weak. The nine period moving very weak under the fourteen period moving F. Stochastic at seventeen percent, very weak. This is a weekly chart. W E E K with a W E A K technical aspect, and look, the nine period. Uh, sorry, the unbalanced volume is making this little W pattern. And not showing any strength, but it's right at the area where there should be. There was over here when it hit the low and bounce, and there was a bounce in the price. So it's very important. So if I look at the TLT, let's go to the TNX. Uh, I'll, I should conclude this. This here has not gone to a lower low. And if it goes under the low that was made um, of 9185 back in October of last year, that becomes a leg E to the downside. Then we have to do the whole analysis again. Look at the way the monthly chart is deflecting lower here. It's not so negative, but it is def deflecting lower. But look at this. <clears throat> the TNX, which is the 10-year yield, 
And I consider this to be pretty important in the sense that this is where your auto loans and all the, all the other kind of loans besides home, uh, the, uh, besides mortgages, all the other loans are already based on the 10-year. Look at this. This went to 43.62. The last one was 43.33. That's 4.333%. Three weeks ago, it went to 4.362%. But wait a minute. That means it has just nicked. You know, I talk about this pattern. I forgot to mention it when I was looking at it a moment ago. I'll do it right now. That you got the H, the red, dreaded H, but then you got the very positive green reverse Y. And this is what we've done. We've gone above it. So that means you continue the notation. In this case, D goes to E. This is now a leg E. You have to wait the entire month to see that it doesn't break above 4362. But at this particular point, the MACD's deflected up. The stochastic's gone back to almost 80% to 78.92. And we'll, and the nine pre moving average is way over the 14. <clears throat> that makes it really important to discuss this in the sense that yields are rising and they're rising to the extent that the market, if you base it on the toll brothers, if you base it on the home builders, how did it go to that new high? Yeah, leg B, I should have said that that could be, yep, that is. Yep, that's an E slash B. That shouldn't have been a B. It should have been an alternate count because it didn't take out the left side low. So look at this, and now it's giving back. And I was going to start, a short, start short positions or at least even option puts. It's still early in the game to say, I don't know how the home builders, uh, all of them had really good rallies, how they bounce so strongly into this new um, new high ground, in this case, Toll Brothers. Look at the HGX index. Uh, oops, don't put it there, put it here. Uh, look at the HGX. That is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. I mean, this is, wow. That was quite a move to the upside. Leg B, and now it's turning around. Is this going to turn into a dreaded H? I think so. I think yes. So there is there is pressure. So I just need to do this because... It is so important in my work. In the Dow, I have a technique that I've used for decades. I call it, yeah, the dark news cloud cover. And what does it mean? It means that the market is always fighting two different scenarios. One is a very negative one, where some days it just doesn't even care about that. And other days it does. And one is a very positive scenario that says you could get momentary dog news cloud covers, but the market, and that's exactly what happened over here, but the market wanted to ignore it. So what I said back on the 26th of July is this is going to turn into at least a shorter term dark news cloud cover. I wasn't 100% sure where it is. Why? Because until you get the um, e the S&P Mini and the uh, Dow E-Mini opening way lower. I'm talking about 48 to 52 points lower. And the, S the Dow down 290 to 350. And then market tries to rally and then it closes at the low of the day. The next day it repeats the same scenario and then closes at the low of the day with a volatility higher. Most of the time, the market is going to try to about cusping. We're on the edge, and I'll talk about that when we get back of this horizontal line. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So let's just wrap up this whole thing with the TLT. I wrap it up for this moment because every day it's going to be changing. If there is a monthly, not a, not a daily or a weekly, but a monthly, that means the entire month of September, there is a close under... 91.85 is the low, but I have to give it a little room. Let's say under 91. Intramonth, if there's, a, if there's a, a weekly close, you can bounce and that's good. But if at the end of the month, the uh, the iShares 20th Treasury bond ETF closes underneath that left side low of 91.85, and I, I, as I said, I, if it's going to do that, it needs to be under 91.81. It has two months in which to close above it. But what it does say is that you've now limited the upside, unless it's just an immediate fantastic buy signal in the daily that goes to a buy mode uh, very quickly. And that helps the weekly start a brand new move to the upside. That's the only condition. But if it's just as it is right now, then all I can say is that yields are going to become a factor. And if you, some of you recall that uh, way back when I started at TFNN, I had already been calling for years about the Japanization of our bond yields and that at some point we will see yields go down to 0%, just as it happened in Japan, and that there will then be at some point a turnaround, a struggle to turn around to the upside. But once it starts happening, and about a year ago I said, I remember being interviewed by Tom, and I said, you know, this is the first time I'm going to say that I think there's a tidal change and it's starting in the daily and I know that it's going to the weekly chart to say yields are going higher. They haven't broken out. If you look, oh, I don't want to do that. I'll, I'll try to do it. I'll have to get rid of it very quickly. If you look at this particular chart right here, uh, I'm going to go to this particular chart there. And you're looking at, oh, I'm putting in too many charts here. There could be a problem. All right, let's just see what happens. Dow's down 74, S&P's down 14. Coming back a little bit from earlier on. Uh, come on, there it is. So this is the 30, this is the, white is the 30-year TYX, brown is the TNX, and cyan is the five-year uh, FVX. Look at this cup and handle. It failed the first time. It went back into the cup. That's what we were talking about. Now it's got a much larger one. So in the context of yields, let me give you this here. 
You remember, I drew in this horizontal green line to say, you know, we've been here before. In fact, if I scroll on, thank you. Yeah, we've been here many times before. Back in June of uh, 2007, the yields were up in the very high range in the, uh, what is it, 5.2, 5.3 area. This is the 30-year. Uh, so we are still way under it. So all I'm saying is that the effect and the effect of yields going higher is going to be determined by just how we see the, and as I read it over the weekend, whether it was a Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or whatever, whatever medium I was looking at, um, or even uh, when I listened to uh, Bloomberg uh, very early this morning, was it last night? Last night, um, the, the home builders, look, here's the Philadelphia Housing Index, had a good candle yes, last week and a, and a poor candle this week. So far, the week is not even an hour <laughs> into the week, but it's not a good sign. And if the Philadelphia Housing Index starts to pull back, and from what I'm reading, there is a slowing of the increase in the um, in the selling prices of houses. But it depends on where you are. For instance, here in the uh, Boston area, I was talking to someone the other day who's in real estate, and he said, you know, um, the, there is a little softening in prices but because there are so few houses and certainly so few good houses on the market, they're getting very good prices. And I can't tell you, he said, that there's really a, a, a big break to the downside because they're getting not the asking price, but really close. So it depends where you are. So I'm making it as clear as possible. If the Philadelphia Index trading at 541, in the next, any time in September, any day in September, if it closes under 500, it's telling me that yields are impact. And that's all I'm saying. Then it's starting to impact the, the general market. If you look at with the iShares Global Timber and Forestry, look how it's hugging the 200-period the exponential moving average. It's not breaking down. It's actually doing quite nicely. Didn't I type in ABCD? I did. Where did I, what happened? Oh, it might have lost it on the, the week that I typed it. And I must have lost it. But it's ABCD. This is just pulling back a little bit. So this is not a market that's just just tanking. It's a market that is very much in play, but with a lot this stuff. I would have to say I love to look at moving parts. But all I can say is that the moving parts now are even in a sector, you can get huge moving parts. So that's why that's why I'm trying to look at we I tightened up the stuff. We had we had a silver stock. We bought it on a sharp dip, thinking that okay, that's good because silver. Look at this SI had a fabulous move up, but it did make almost a one to one to a peak D. That's where I get a little cautious. So we got into this, but I I tightened up the stock. We got stopped out of this particular uh, stock that we have. I'm not prepared to play games, and I'll tell you why. Look, here's gold. Gold. Turn around at where the 200 period moving average. For days I've been saying, how does it handle the 200 period moving average? So far, very poorly. All right, and that's in the daily. Look at the weekly. It can't even turn pink. It can't even turn green. The pink nine period moving average is still down. Look at the dollar. Even if the dollar gives back some of the gains today, and it's holding pretty well, up 51 ticks at 104.74. This is a breakout in the day, not the weekly. The weekly still has to close decisively above this high for me to say, hey, I think the dollar's going to last a lot longer to the upside. And that's at 105 point, uh, is that an 88 or 60? 88 that was made the week of the uh, 10th of March of, of this year. A close above that says, you know what? We've gone below the horizontal rectangle low. Now we can go above it, and then we can start to stall. But going above it really starts to put pressure in many areas, maybe maybe the market as well, but I don't have that correlation exact. I just I think it's a little fuzzy. Look at the EUR. Isn't this a tumble? Look at that. Right under the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge target support line. But the week is young. It can close above it. But look at that smash, PK minus in a, in a, in a 
cup an arch formation during an H plunging below. Look away from the 200 period moving average. Look at the USD JPY. This is the yen. Nice breakout. That means this is a G slash C. I couldn't tell you how many G slash Cs eventually go to a D. And I should say eventually. I should say very quickly go to a D. So here we are in this inner leg D in the, in the weekly chart. And the monthly chart is improving technically. I don't want to play games with this stuff. This is really important. It's a, it's a let's look at the SMHs. And they are holding. And that to me is a big clue. The SMHs are down just a fraction, down 22 cents at 105.99. This is holding quite well. And this is you know, where, the, where the semis go, the market tends to go. But it didn't take out the left side high of 161.17. Not yet. I'll be back. Dow's down 53. S&P's down Ooh, 11. Not bad. I'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So just let me go through the order of what ANET. Yes, I had mentioned ANET was acting extremely well. And that maybe looking at options uh, would be a way of looking at, at playing in this case i say i shouldn't say playing i should really say positioning because this, there's no play here this is making new highs uh higher lows higher highs high all-time high friday just under it today it's 
Arista Networks, and I looked at so many network stocks over the last month or two, and I kind of ignored them. I thought, wait a minute, why, why are they doing well? Well, there are a lot of them, this one in particular. I mean, is, is Cisco, um, I would say that kind of goes under the network thing. Yeah, there it is. Cisco, wow, all, uh, a recovery high, multi-year, no, a yearly high um, on Friday, and acting down just 32 cents today. Uh, the all-time high was about 64 plummets down to the 39s, and now it's trading at 57. Very nice action. <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. You've got to be very selective here. Some things are working, some things are not. Some things that you think are working are not. Some things that you just you say, how on earth? I mean, the question came in about Carvana. Um, so let me just finish this. So what I would do is this. I, I'm not going, I don't think yet I'm going to do it for subscribers. But what I was saying is, to buy it here at 196, you can rest assured that if you do a, a risk-reward calculation, you could very easily say to yourself, well, it's a fantastic move, but there's no reason why it doesn't test the weekly nine-period nine moving average of, of 180, and here it is at 196. Well, 16 points is, is 8 or 9 percent risk. So the way I was looking at it, so from the action that, from its higher highs, if you draw it inside, Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, it's right in that zone right now. So the, I would not put new money to work, and I think that was the question, to add to a position. What I would do is I'd say it, if it pulls back, and just have patience, it will pull back. How far? I don't know, but I'm looking at the, at least the gap from last week. You know, gaps, people say all gaps get filled. And I say, no, if you look at, just don't think that way. Rather think of the most recent gap, there's a chance that that one will get filled. Then go to the next one, then go to the next one. I mean, why talk about a gap? I, there's this island reversal way down to 159. What was the high? Right there. Island reversal on the 28th of July of 100 and... Oh, my, look at that. That's 137. Is that right? Why? That's 160 there. That can't be 100. 157. Uh-oh. Looks to me like I'm going to have to start wearing my reading glasses a little bit more <laughs> here we go um, yeah so look at this um, that gap why talk about that gap when you've still got that gap to fill you've still got that gap to fill so do one at a time I'm just saying I would consider a October call preferably if it gets to 187 at any point in this month I would look at that, and maybe I'd even go out to November, but I would look at the call, call position, but on a pullback, and I'd get it as close to in the money as possible. I want to move almost point for point with it, and that means I know my risk to the downside, the premium will be wiped out, and then you've still got the actual call itself. So I'm just saying as close as possible, uh, perhaps I can give you a number, I'd say uh, – Look at it at 190. Give me a yell and we'll look at it together. I prefer at 187 because if there's 187.50 call, that's what I would look at and I'd get it if the, if it slips under in 186. As long as I've got a little bit of uh, premium to, to myself, uh, that's what I would look at. So I, th that was the question and I'm just going to say that's the way I would look at it. Next question came in. Uh, about Carvana, C R L O C V N A. Is that correct? Yes, I got it for a change. I can never get the symbol. All the symbols, I, I, I know them so well. Not even if I don't know the stocks. But this one, I always get wrong. C, I always want to put an R in it. Wouldn't Carvana have a C R V N or something? Anyway, so C V N A is down a dollar at 19 at 49.64. Yeah, you see the way it rallies? You see the way the MACD held? The last one didn't hold very nicely. This one has a flat stochastic at 90%. So if you're looking at the upside, if, if um, 
If this doesn't crack 48.26 by when? Today's already Tuesday. By Thursday at this time when I'm doing my show, but in fact has even gone to today's high of 51.07, there's a chance you can sneak to a leg C. I don't know if it's going to go all the way back to the top, but I have to consider the long side. And then you can talk about the short side. Now, the short side, if you're looking out uh, for Kavana, and if you, I mean, if you, let's go to what is that one, that guy, um, uh, AN, is that AN? Yep, there it is. I remember the symbol AN, which is Ordination Inc. <coughs> Order cells. Look at this. A dreaded H goes to a lowercase m, which repeats to another m, and then a third m. So this is just stuck in a range. Now, the whole thing about automobiles, I'm not going to waste time today. I'll, maybe someone remind me. Maybe tomorrow I'll talk about it. But I, I don't want to go into that as I see it at this particular point because I think there's a, a, a real mixed picture. And I, I meant to stop by one of the dealers over the weekend, never got a chance, but to discuss the electric, the EVs, because more and more people are interested in them, but a lot more people that I've been uh, speaking to say, we're a little bit worried about the energy factor. Uh, what happens if the energy, if the, the, the core, the utilities start to have a problem? What do we do? We don't go to work for three days because we couldn't charge it or whatever. So there's a little hesitancy there. So all I'm saying is that, yeah, if you're looking at the downside, see, I wanted to put that in next CVNA. I wanted to put that up, so I wanted to put that in, and I'll put it in right here. Hey, if you're looking at the downside, I wouldn't be surprised if you if it does drop. I think it's going to be a sudden. It's like like a uh, just pull the rug. I mean, that's just the way it's going to be. A real rug pull. That yeah, this is Lucy yanking the rug. And if that does, forty forty nine thirty six right now. Within, by Friday, by Friday's close, this will be under 45 if it's going to really tank at this particular time. So you need speed. So I, I don't know what, which way you're going. I'm just looking. Fang was a question. Fang is amazing. This is Diamondback Energy. Um, look at the daily chart. Broke out. And now I need to do this. Let me show you. Shall we methodology? Okay. The most obvious lowest low is that low right there in June. So what do I do? I immediately put in an up arrow. When I'm doing this in real time, I start with a plus sign, and then I'll upgrade it to an up arrow. So there's your peak A. There's your peak B. There's your peak C. Move it to the right. There's your D. Is that uh, an instant restart? Well, it is. So this is an E slash A. This is an F slash B. F slash B. And then a sudden slice through to the side. Well, if this is if this is an F or an A, we'll see what happens. But this is oh, I'll do it when we get back from the break. The Dow is down 86, the S&P is down 30. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. Be right back. We'll see if this little pup is going to do anything for the market. Go right there. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So, uh, with FANG, which is uh, Diamondback, uh, let's see, A, B, C, D, A. Yes, um, this is really good action. I think this is natural. This is both uh, oil and gas, and it's doing this cup formation. That's the G slash because of this instant restart right here. Monthly doesn't matter, daily, weekly doesn't matter. Instant restart is an instant restart at a peak D. Says that you got um, it's the only technique that I know of ever is this particular technique that gives you the uh, concept is. That if it's strong, it can actually go for another four peaks higher. That's that's really how exciting this particular technique is. So in this particular instance, that's going to be a G slash C, and G slash C invariably goes to a D. Say so yes, I like it. Um, this daily now, I want you to say this is more likely an F slash. Look, this is. Uh, I don't want to go into this right now. I, I'm just going to say I did this a little bit on Friday. I spoke about Chapman wave. Um, unconventional flat base restart. So this is that characteristic. So here I have to put a chance that this is an F slash B. Then you get another B. So this is now, this is the starting point actually. And therefore this can become an A. And this is where it, yeah, this is where it is. Every technique that you have, I don't care what it is, at some point, you're going to find a technique that is just absolutely fantastically easy, and then it gives you a kind of headache to say, oh, now what? And you have to do a little bit of thinking. Well, thinking should be part of the game in this particular instance. Why? Because um, we're talking about price point. This is a fixed price point in time as a conglomerate of both uh, mechanical, in this case electronic, and human resources. So anything can happen at any point. But I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I'm going to call this a D for now. There might be an alternate count, but that's what I'm doing. If I'm correct, at some point in the next six to eight weeks, it's going to come back and test 145. But it's at 155 right now. It looks really good. This is a weekly chart, that's A. You have to get, this is your starting point right here. So this becomes an A as well. That, I believe, is a double top. I don't think it made it even by one penny. 135, 11, 135. Take that back, mister. That's a B. And that's a C, and there's a D. So, so far, Diamondback Energy is acting really well. I had a question about rig. Let's see if that's in the same category. I think they kind of go together. Uh, rig is, is stalling a little bit, but it's so close to that left side high. Peak D and the peak D in the weekly chart. So, yeah, they're going together. And that just tells me, have a look at natural gas. Natural gas right now is trading. Ugh. <laughs> How many months has it been that we've been saying, oh, natural gas? I do see from the building of this rectangle formation, 
that at any point, if the weekly chart is able in natural gas, I suppose I should go to the UNG because most people don't look at the futures. So I'm going to go to UNG. That's the trading vehicle, United States Natural Gas Fund. Yeah, it's the same thing. Now, at any point, if there's one more push to the high that was made back in the week of the November, uh, August the 11th of 8.08, .08, if we can just see UNG touch 8, 810 intra-week, that means obviously on a daily basis, but an intra-week basis, I'd be looking at something that I've discussed for ages that as I'm seeing the technicals build, and I read this morning, or I, I read it, I think it was on Bloomberg, that Europe um, is still uh, very weak when it comes to natural gas. I All I can say is that Historically, as you get into the winter, this is if there's going to be a rally. This is where it should start, and we haven't seen anything yet. So as I'm looking at it, looking out, if you're willing to have just a lot of patience, here again, I'd rather use an option. I knew, I know what I'm going to lose. I know what the potential is. I'd rather be looking at UNG as a, an option and I'd have to go into October. I couldn't go any sooner than that. In fact, yeah, I'd go on October and definitely at 666 right now, uh, down 39 cents. I'd want to be, in this particular instance, I'd rather say I'm going to go a little bit out the money and sacrifice something because I know exactly what I can lose. You lose that premium. So I'd rather go a little out. I don't want to give back in the money and the and the premium, because it's it's done, it's done horribly. Lower lows and lower highs just over and over again. So, but I the the, the weekly chart is saying there is some improvement. The monthly chart is improvement. What are you what are you looking at? So that's the way I'm I'm looking at this. I'm saying a little later on, a couple of weeks could be sooner, but I think it will start to move. And if it's able to. By Friday this week, if it even has one sudden spike to 740, that'll be the start to say, aha, now it's shaking. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a little dog that's jumped out of the water and is splashing everybody, standing still, and then it just walks off because it's got its direction where it wants to go. And that's where we're looking at this. All right, that's enough with that. So next question came in as, uh, where was it? Yeah, let me just, if I can actually read this. Um Basil, GDX, speaking of gaps, the evidence is showing GDX building cause this past year to close the gap from 11,422. Thoughts, GDX. So we, we were in GDX, we got out of GDX, and I might be completely wrong with that silver stock that we got in and we got out. I don't like what I'm seeing here. Just look, I said GDX was not participating gold itself. Look look at this gold chart. It went above the 200-period moving average. Now it's down 16, but look at the GDX. It didn't even get to the 200-period moving average, and that made me nervous. Yet silver, if you go to the SLV, silver did act very nicely, but it did make a peak D. And the chapter we peak D, especially a peak D under the previous high, says you've got to be a little careful. So when we went into our silver stock, I made the, I, I, I make, I've made the stop real tight and we're out. I don't care, 3% or whatever it is. We, we can make that up really quickly, but I'm not going to be hanging around on anything that says I failed to prove myself and the, we, the day is young. It's not even two hours into the session an hour and a half into the session, maybe things change later on, but that's the way I'm looking at it. And I still see little spurts of buying coming in and spurts of selling. So the GDX, the question was, uh, was that November? November of 2022. So let's just go to that. I'll go to the daily chart, November. Oh, that's what I was going to do today. I'll do that all week. Someone remind me. I want to show the expanded charts because this is where you get a good sense. So you're going to... 22, November, September, going all the way back to November. Oh, right there. So you're talking about from the low that was made right here in October. Oh, no, it was the low that was made in September. So this goes, I used to have this notated, I lost it. Peak A, P, 
Pick A, B, C. Is that really a D? Uh, okay, wait. Right, let me review the question during the break, and then a question came in about A Z O. Now, what Ron said, a fantastic short sale at AZO just before Ennis came out, made 100 points or something, and we've kind of stepped away all this time. I'll be back with both of them. Sue's brief in Dow's down 47, 67. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'll do a little more work tomorrow when I when I do my show with the GDX. I, I want to check some of the things out that we discussed. Uh, Triple M, yes, nice group up today, up to $1.18 and $108.13. Are we starting to see the oldies start to become newbies again? I think there's a really good chance. And the other question is uh, platinum. So look, yes, platinum. This is a continuous contract. I d didn't put the co the um, current contract. So um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's go. Jeff says uh, no. Je Jeff says AZO. We'll do a little more on the AZO right now. I'm just going to go to the uh, uh, George says hi, Basil. I did short platinum. Um, yeah, so the platinum got repelled at the 200 period moving average. It just keeps getting repelled every time it goes there. Look, it can't hold it. So this is really important. If you want to follow through to the downside, first of all, congratulations. Um, that was that was an inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. I'll also do a little bit more on this tomorrow. And now we're way underneath it. So at uh, nine, on the continuous contract, 942 down 26 on at 
PL, that's a continuous contract. It's changed the pattern of the monthly. It's changing the pattern of the weekly. What I would do is I would have a stop under today's high, which was at 960 and you're at 942. I wouldn't give anything back because these things move really quick. It looks like it now wants to turn to the downside, even though the technicals are not that bad at all. So that's why I'm saying what if you have a choice, take a little bit off. If you're asking me, I would take a tad off now. I'd lower the stop. And I just let it ride and I'd hold it overnight. If you're able to keep a stop in that's functioning overnight, I'd put that stop in because this is a fantastic, it's one of the best gains it's, it's had on the downside for a long time. So the Dow's down 65, SP's down 10. I think this is a little bit of a, a shakeout for the moment. Uh, I don't see it as being a major, major turn just to the downside. I still see some residual strength. Meantime, back at the rest, the semis are up 31 cents. That's not a bad sign. So hold tight. This is a, a convoluted week we're looking at coming up and individual stocks.